seven different languages to more than a half billion viewers each week. The World Wrestling Federation, the worldwide leader in sports entertainment. Hell, son, there ain't but one belt in the Federation that I'm interested in, and that's the World Wrestling Federation Championship belt. So what I'm going to do, Rock, is I'm going to forfeit the damn title to you tonight because I got bigger fish to fry. So go ahead and take the damn thing because I don't want it no more. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Straight down the middle. 
So now Vader down once again. Of course, as I mentioned, The Rock not here at ringside. I wonder if The Rock is still looking for his Intercontinental title. We'll tell you more about this that situation, show you what happened this past Monday on Raw regarding Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Intercontinental title. And that belt is uh, is still in the possession, evidently, of Steve Austin, because like you mentioned, Rocky doesn't have it. Plus, also later on, we'll give you details on how you could win Stone Cold Steve Austin's truck. Jim, the same truck that the Nation of Domination was victimized by at Degeneration X in your house. That's right, I understand it's going to be repaired. thunder that is Vader. The dementia that is the deranged mankind. The haunting mystery that is the Undertaker. And the unrelenting rage that is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Experience WWF The Music Volume 2. There are 15 of your favorite WWF original jams in all. To order, call 815-734-1161 or send a check or money order to the address on your screen. It's only 20 bucks for the CD. This album is available in stores, but why delay? Get yours now. WWF The Music, Volume 2. We are back on WWF New York. Vader is in a lot of trouble. The Rock has introduced himself to this matchup. Come on now. Thomas got that leather belt. And he is choking him for all he's worth. Vader has to contend with the nation of domination outside the ring, Farouk inside the ring, and the specter of gold dust and his uh, Howard Stern impersonation uh, revealing his private parts is uh, still very much in the air, so to speak. Looming on the horizon at all times. And now with Farouk in control, the rock on the outside, of course, uh, Rocky Maivia is indeed the Intercontinental Champion. Take a look at him there, but he does not have the belt. Uh, the Stone Cold Steve Austin situation regarding the Intercontinental title needs some clearing up. We'll show you what happened later on. Look at the strength and power of Vader. Oh, oh timber! Like a big redwood. Vader has created an opening. It's desperation time, I think, though, for the 458-pound Vader. And too late! Nobody home. Farouk uh, managed to move out of the way. That's the one thing that Vader does not possess is extraordinary speed. He's quick for his size, but Farouk is a man over 100 pounds lighter. Folks, later on in the broadcast, we will have a visit. The man from the dark side, The Undertaker, will be here in action. Plus, we will also give you all the information about the big Raw is War event coming to the Nassau Coliseum on December 29th. Time is ticking away, folks, before that big event invades Uniondale. The referee, Mike Kyoto, checking Vader. I don't think he's going to give it up. As a matter of fact, I know he's not going to give it up, but Farouk is still wearing him down. Whoa! Straight right hand to the eye. Oh, another! And another! Head of steam Ooh. off the ropes. Buries it into the midsection. Perhaps another window of opportunity for Vader. He has been unable to capitalize on some small openings before, but perhaps now he can finally mount some offense. Well, he's had everybody on his back. And you hear the people, Vader, Vader. Ooh. Everyone on his back, but the people on his side. And oh, that one was dangerously low. The lower midsection, Vader with a crunching elbow. And now, Baruch in a world of hurt, slid over to the corner. Vader setting up for the Vader bomb, it looks like. Looks like a lot of troop movement down on the floor, Jim, with the nation. Thomas up. Rocky. No. Oh. Oh. Right. 
Fox efforts. Thanks for the help. Buddy, Prince like you, I don't need Prince, right? Vader overcame the odds, and all is forgiven. Isn't that sweet? Folks, like we said, the big event, Raw is War at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Folks, it's two weeks away. Monday night, December 29th, Uniondale, get ready. You can get your tickets at the box office, or you can call Ticketmaster, 516-888-9000, 212-307-7171. Over 40 WWF superstars. Well, still to come, folks, we'll show you what happened between Stone Cold, The Rock, Vince McMahon, and the Intercontinental title, including exclusive footage when Raw went off the air last Monday. Plus, the man for the dark side, The Undertaker, is here in action. I can't wait to see him on WWF New York. And when we return, we'll take a look back at the war zone and what happened when Shawn Michaels waited for Owen Hart to show up. I know what you're thinking. I'm not a real athlete. I'm just a wrestler. I'm six foot ten, 328 pounds. I won boxing with golden gloves three years ago. I was a national champion at the University of Miami. My jersey was retired at Florida State. I was the ultimate fighting champion. When you step through those ropes, bad things do happen. And over 200 stitches. I've suffered a dozen concussions. I've broken bones. I've separated shoulders. Bad hair broke my neck. Blown out knees. But I still got up. This is who I am. This is what I do. I'm not really an athlete. This isn't real. Try lace with my boots. Call now. You could be a ringside renegade. With WLNY TV, New York 55, and the WWF. Call 1 888 550 2608 to register. Welcome back, everyone, to WWF New York. Thanks for joining us. Last Sunday night at the Generation X in your house, Ken Shamrock met Shawn Michaels for the World Wrestling Federation Championship. And, Jim, this was a colossal battle. Well, both men's strategies were obvious from the start. Ken Shamrock going with the power offense, trying to maneuver Shawn Michaels into a point where he could apply submission. Michaels, on the other hand, taking to the air the high-risk offense, doing anything that he could to neutralize Shamrock's power, including interference from the other members of DX. Both men did display great skill. Shawn Michaels, the high-flying elbow off the top. But it was Ken Shamrock, folks, who indeed was robbed as the ankle lock submission was applied and Shawn Michaels perhaps just moments away from tapping out, DX hit the ring, leading to a disqualification. Well, Michaels retained the title, but as he was exulting in his moral victory, went out of the crowd, suddenly from nowhere, Owen Hart reappeared in the WWF, knocking Michaels off the apron of the ring and through the announcer's table. Owen wasn't finished. All the weeks of frustration, the weeks of anger, the weeks of resentment came out of Owen Hart as he pounded Shawn Michaels into insensibility on the floor until the other members of DX could manage to pull Owen Hart off and Owen then disappeared into the crowd from whence he came. Then the next night on Raw, the WWF champion Shawn Michaels responded to the attack by Owen Hart. So Owen Hart, I've been in the back all day. I know you're not here. Last night at Dead Generation X, you came from nowhere and you ran off from nowhere. But the thing is, I wasn't born yesterday. I feel like he's out here somewhere wearing a dress, wearing a girl, God knows. But if Owen Hart is anywhere within the state of Maine, I am sitting right here until somebody drags his scrawny little butt out here so I can finally rid the World Wrestling Federation of that one small, tiny, little, stinky knight. So in heart, the Generation X is going to sit here and play a game of poker until you bring your scrawny out here and face me man to man. So DX sat and played a game of strip poker right in the middle of the ring. The headbangers scheduled to wrestle, came down to the ring for their matchup, but DX was still there. It was time for someone to budge. Well, come on, this is like every Friday night. All the fellas get a good card game going. Well, it ain't Friday. Then the old, then the old ladies. Oh, wow! Michael just... He's, I can't believe what we're seeing here.
damn near unconscious. Moss is battered and fried. Boy, there's a WWF champion that we can really all be proud of. A wild card right now Jim well nobody knows where Owen Hart comes from or where he goes back to he's not entering the locker room area um, he is just basically stalking Shawn Michaels Matt and Jeff Hardy will do battle with Doug Furness and Phil LaFon here in tag team action certainly we'll try to find out more about the situation regarding Owen Hart in his pursuit of Shawn Michaels will it continue this Monday on Raw we know that Shawn Michaels and Triple H D-Generation X will be in tag team action Jim against Road Warriors Hawk and Animal the Legion of Doom and what a tag team match that's going to be and speaking of pursuit Ken Shamrock still in pursuit of the WWF title he's announced he's going to be the first man to enter the 1998 Royal Rumble to try to go through 29 other guys to get a title shot Shamrock was absolutely irate after that contest, but Ken, I'm sure, will be firmly in the corner of his brother Frank Shamrock, who goes after the UFC middleweight title, folks, at the Ultimate Japan pay-per-view from Yokohama, Japan, on December 21st. He'll be battling Kevin Jackson, and we certainly want to wish Frank Shamrock the best of luck. That pay-per-view event gets underway at 8 p.m. on the 21st. These Hardy Boys, they will take any kind of risk. They'll pay any price to... What a spring... Oh! He went for the springboard moonsault and the rope went right out from under his feet. Take a look at it again and listen. That's why they call it high risk. Oh, the sickening thud. The back of Jeff Hardy's head. And right now, he, he doesn't know where he is. He's, he's taking his time, but he don't know where. Well, it would appear to be academic. I'm assuring Phil LaFon will just cover Jeff, and that'll be the end of this matchup. But no, he's going to pick him up and... How much else, what other punishment oh. can he possibly give him? This will do it too, and no, sir. Jeff with a weak kick, but a kick nonetheless. Like I said, these kids are pure guts. They're not the biggest, they're not the strongest. They have incredible ability, but more than that, they've just got guts. Ooh. Face first to the back. LaFon, a move he made famous over in Japan, hooks the leg two. And Madden to make the save. I'm wondering maybe Jim of discretion, the better part of Valor, should have let that three count just happen. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, his guy's got to have compassion for his brother, but his brother's still fighting. I, now, I don't believe this. Look at oh, Bulldog, desperation move. Jeff Hardy needs to make a tag. He desperately needs a tag to his brother Matt because he has really been wounded. Furnace and LaFon have a killer instinct now, unlike what they had when they first came here. Tag me. Here we go. Hardy in. A couple of clotheslines. Furnace and LaFon on the receiving end. These Hardy boys have guts. Matt Hardy now with a slam. And he's going, it looks like he's going to go for a high-risk move. Springboard moonsault. Yes. Nailed it. Cover. Two. No, sir. LaFon still has too much. Furnace and LaFon back from their auto accident and better than ever. These young men from North Carolina they don't know the meaning of the word quit. Snap suplex. And now another high-risk maneuver. Inverted splash. Jeff Hardy right back on the horse. Legal man. Two. And Doug Furness in to break up the count. These guys are going after it. What a match. Jeff now. Oh, my. Go. Oh, my God. Up into the lights. Sabat kick. Clothesline. DDT. WWF New York, the phenom of the World Wrestling Federation. The Undertaker is in action. Plus, we're going to take a look back at what's gone on this past week between Stone Cold, The Rock, Vince McMahon, and the Intercontinental title. Plus, we'll see some exclusive footage as well. And when we return, the Headbangers are in the house. And here's
there's that information on how you can win Stone Cold Steve Austin's truck. You can't walk his walk. And I know that better than anybody. You can't talk his talk. My mouth is starting to get wet already. But you can't drive the truck. The Stone Cold Steve Austin specially equipped Chevy Z71 pickup. Because we're giving it away in the WWF Royal Rumble sweepstakes. To enter, call 1-900-RUMBLE-98. It's $1.99 per call, and there's no purchase or telephone call necessary to enter. Simply hand print your name, address, and telephone number on a standard-sized postcard and send to the address on your screen. You must be 18 and have a valid driver's license to enter. Deadlines for entries is Monday, January 12th. But don't delay. Call 1-900-RUMBLE-98 and enter now. The call costs $1.99. 20 runners up will receive a Royal Rumble merchandise gift pack valued at $250. Winners will be selected at random and announced during the Royal Rumble, January 18th on pay-per-view. Welcome back, everyone. Last Sunday at the Generation X, Brian Christopher took on Taka Michinoku in the finals of the Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament. And, Jim, this championship contest was everything we expected and more. Well, the battle to become the first ever WWF Light Heavyweight Champion saw both men pull out all the stops with aerial artistry. But then Brian Christopher missed on the Tennessee Jam, allowing Taka to deliver the Michinoku driver for the pin, the victory, and the championship belt. Then the next night on Raw, Taka Michinoku was scheduled for an interview with his first challenger, El Unico, when Jerry the King Lawler confronted both men. You got no business here either. Brian Christopher is the true champion. You need to just hightail it back to Mexico, wherever you... Uh-oh. King's not having a good night so far. Okay, two against one, that's fine. They both weigh the same as the King. Oh. Combined, oh, what, what's this? The masked man has attacked Taka. Oh. What in the... Oh, no. Uh, come on. It's a father and son reunion. That's Brian Christopher. Stitches in his lip and all. Brian Christopher or... Oh, no. A spun pile driver or Brian Christopher. Heinous acts by that father and son duo. And Jerry Lawler will battle this gets up for one call with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a total of all weight of 492 pounds, Butch and Pressure, the Hitbanger. Couple of your faves right there, James E. Well, they're former tag team champions. Tremendous teamwork uh, is the hallmark of the Headbangers. It's going to be interesting to see how they compete with Sniper and Recon from the Truth Commission because, after all, the Jackal is their spiritual leader. And their opponents, accompanied to ringside by the Jackal, at a total combined weight of 568 pounds, the team of Recon and Sniper, the Truth Commission. Almost a sociopathic Tony Robbins. Look at this guy, it's just the love and benevolence for everyone that he has is spread all over his face. He's the kind of guy that would stab his mother in the back and then have her arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. While the Jackal, of course, is the uh, emotional hot button involved in the Truth Commission, you cannot deny the physical skills of Recon and Sniper. What about Kurgan, the seven foot, 350 plus pound monster who has been reformed, I think mainly by the Jackal's creative mind. Well, you see uh, Sniper and Recon there with the T on their foreheads. It stands for truth. Always tell the truth according to the Jackal, and he has told the truth about Kurgan, the interrogator. He has uh, taken him out of the team of the Truth Commission, concentrating on singles matches. And this guy's a freak of nature, and it's scary to me what kind of control that the Jackal has over Kurgan. Cross body, two count, strong kick out, though, by Recon. Bringing up the left arm is uh, Mosh of the Headbangers. Tag down made. Here comes Thrasher. They're going to have to use tremendous teamwork, which they are already. Look at this beautiful double kick and double forward buster. They're going to have to use great teamwork to counteract the size difference with the Truth Commission. But this recon, I'll tell you what, he is fast. Certainly is. A man over 300 pounds, a tremendous high flyer. Mexican arm drag there. 
and uh, the headbangers are going to need to take some liberties, I think, with the five count, stretch that five count as long as they can any time a tag is made. Irish whip across, head of steam, follows in with a clothesline, and recon on the receiving end, Jim, and I'm sure that this is not sitting well with the Jackal. Ooh, I tell you. He hit it. Wait a minute. 360. Dosey doed him and clotheslined him right out of his boots. And you see the jackal at ringside. I can see him from my vantage point. He is really smiling at that. Tag made. Here comes Sniper. Jackal says that the uh, team of Recon and Sniper came to him in Madison Square Garden and uh, they were basically down on their luck, needing guidance, and they do everything that they can to try to please the leader of the Truth Commission. Yeah, I wonder if they came to him or if he went to them. Jackal is the kind of guy who goes to someone who has a weakness, who has an insecurity, who has a need for something, and he capitalizes on that. He exploits that. Charles Manson did the same thing. Well, you saw the way he treated Kurgan, for example, this past Monday on Raw. As the claw was applied, the bell had been sounded. In fact, the decision was reversed. Jackal comes in and smacks Kurgan right across the face. I mean, is that any way to try to motivate his man? And then, and then Kurgan laughed about it. Once he saw Jackal was laughing, that is. Drop of the elbow. This is a very physical tag team contest, folks. It's the Hitbangers against Recon and Sniper. Well, let's rock, two bells. The official WWF action figures with bone-crunching action. So these girls want to slam dance. Well, what <laughs> <laughs> a rush. Buried Alive gift set from Jax, only at Target. Welcome back, everyone, to WWF New York. Tag team action continues. Get up, get up. And uh, Recon has uh, Masha the Headbangers in a world of Support. I'm Kevin Kelly, Jim Cornette here, Jim Ross on vacation, two and almost a three. But I talked to JR's lawyer. He'll be back next week with time served. Stop it. Sorry, Murr. Recon and Sniper double teaming now, referee Tim White. That's Take the mark of a good tag team. They're going to do everything they can behind the referee's back, and they're going to double up whenever possible. Folks, later on in the show, we will have for you The Undertaker in action, as well as the uh, footage from what happened this past Monday on Raw, Rocky Maivia becoming the Intercontinental Champion. Plus, we'll show you the exclusive footage of what happened involving Stone Cold Vince and The Rock when Raw went off the air. I think Vince McMahon has gone too far lately. He's made some decisions, a lot of them controversial. Some of them I don't agree with. But when you got a guy like Vince McMahon, who is used to everybody doing what he says, and then a guy like Steve Austin, who's not used to doing what anybody says, you're going to have trouble. Conflicts abound following Raw this past Monday. Recon and Sniper in control of the action here on WWF New York. Recon slips in with that front face lock. He's grounded the man, trying to keep Mosh from making the tag to fresh. Of course, the Jackal at ringside, I'm sure pleased with the performance of his team so far. You know, sometimes I think he's just as pleased when, when the Truth Commission gets beat up because it's not him. I think he just enjoys forcing these men to do things. Wait a minute. The sniper threw the referee so he didn't see the tag. And now Recon and Sniper able to seize on this opportunity, pounding away in the corner. Marsh is in a world of trouble. And he has got to make that tag a thrasher because the Truth Commission, like a pack of hungry wolves, have cut that sheep off from the flock. And he needs to get the flock out of there. Recon and Sniper, great physical team. Mix of high flying and straight vertical suplex really drove him down with emphasis. <laughs> and look at this. 320 pounds on the top rope, Jim. He's three quarters away across the ring. Mosh sidestepped him. Perhaps a mistake in the opening now that Mosh needs. Now Mosh has got to get the tag before Recon does. Recon's got the tag to Sniper. Look like Sniper hooked his toe coming into the ring and now, ooh, the door is open. Thrasher's walked through with a series of right hands. Nice drop kick. Now it's Thrasher and Mosh in the ring with Recon alone. They're gonna set him up for a double team. Full slam right in the center of the ring. And watch this. What are they doing? Oh! Tremendous tag team maneuver. And now it looks like they're gonna set up for the stage dive. These guys are innovators, let me tell you. Going for the stage dive, ending it all here. Sniper's in. Hits those ropes, and he hits Mosh. Here comes Thrasher. This thing is broken down. All four guys are in the ring. 
Tim White trying to restore order, having absolutely no luck. He, he's waved it off. The referee has waved it off. I think it must be a double disqualification. I think Sniper has an opportunity. Wait a second. Moss coming out of his skirt on the far side. He's come right out of his bloomers. He's ready to fight. Tim White called for the bell, but this fight isn't over. Sniper down, recon staggered. Head of Steve off the ropes. Down goes recon and out. The headbangers are standing tall and ready to go in that ring. And the jackal looks like he's waving the troops off. but to uh, throw this contest out a double disqualification. Nothing settled, though, between these two terrific tag teams. Well, the Truth Commission will live to fight another day, and the Jackal may have very well done just that. But the Jackal making his mark here in the WWF. The Headbangers once again, former champions and on the path back to the title. Still to come here on WWF New York. The man from the dark side, The Undertaker, is in action. And when we return, the shocking news from Stone Cold and what you didn't see as the war zone went off the air. All is not as it appears, folks. We'll be back. Now everyone on the World Wide Web can get their favorite superstar merchandise for the holidays at the new WWF Shop Zone online store. Find us at shopzone.wwf.com. Order now. Welcome back, everyone. Tonight, WWF New York is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Look for the Army hyperlink on the WWF AOL site to find out how you can be all you can be. And by Tiger Electronics, makers of electronic laser tag. And by Jax. Collect Superstar Series number five from Jax, available at most retailers. Now let's take you back to Degeneration X and the Intercontinental title match. Okay, finally, the time has come. do it but the controversy surrounding that intercontinental championship match would continue the next night as wwf owner vince mcmahon austin once again struck a referee struck another wwf official he gave him the stunner whether it was inadvertent or not and just as that official was coming back around, can I have your attention? And just as that official was coming around, therefore tonight, live here on Raw. Later on in the war zone, Stone Cold would come out to defend the Intercontinental Championship against The Rock, or so we thought, because the rattlesnake doesn't take orders well. He doesn't like being told what to do, and rather than give Vince McMahon his way, he decided instead to reveal that he has other plans for himself that will send shockwaves not only through Vince McMahon, but through the entire World Wrestling Federation. And I decided, Vince, that I ain't gonna wrestle because I done whipped this <laughs> once. I will not do it tonight. You keep talking about your little consequences, so I wanna know what you're prepared to do. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna fire me? Vince, The Rock thinks you should fire him. Stay out of this. You stay out of this. This yeah, may be PJ Carlisson mode before this is all over with. I'm not, I'm not going to fire you. What I'm going to do, Steve Austin, you're forcing me to strip you of that Intercontinental title right now. You're forcing me to strip you of it and give it 
to The Rock. Whoa! Not popular. Maybe not a healthy decision. If you think for one split second that you can strip this title from Stone Cold Steve Austin, take it from my hands right now, and I'll knock your damn teeth out. I don't think they're real anyway, but I don't, Shut up. I don't think McMahon would like to lose them. What I will do, Vince, because I done been the Intercontinental Champion, I done been the Tag Team Champions, Hell, son, playing right there on his <laughs> You talk about your TV ratings, you send the cable crew with me because Steve Austin's got plans for the belt and he ain't got a damn thing to do. Now he's stolen the belt. He's forfeited the Intercontinental title. He says he's got plans for the belt. Rocky Maivia is a new Intercontinental champion. And Paul, do close back, King. broadcast ended there but stone cold steve austin wasn't through with his rampage on wwf management officials and security as vince mcmahon got a chair to defend himself the rattlesnake continued to cause the chaos that vince was trying to prevent stone cold even went on to physically abuse more wwf officials what's stone cold gonna do next you can find out and be a part of it at the nassau coliseum two weeks away monday night december 29th the huge main event hits the undertaker dude love vader and stone cold steve austin against the four members of the nation of domination folks that's just two weeks away monday night december 29th be part of all the action of a live raw is war at the nassau coliseum tickets are available at the box office or at ticketmaster the phone numbers are on your screen make it the perfect christmas gift a great opportunity to bring the whole family to a live raw is war gym at the nassau coliseum bring your posters bring your signs bring your banners it's live national tv and you can be a part of it at the nassau coliseum folks when we return here on wwf new york the undertaker the man from the dark side will be here in action 1-800-COLLECT proudly presents the WWF Royal Rumble. Live Sunday, January 18th from San Jose, California. 1-800-COLLECT, the easy way to say. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Weighing 290 pounds, the Sultan. As the Sultan prepares to face The Undertaker last Sunday night at Degeneration X, it was Jeff Jarrett's debut against the phenom of the World Wrestling Federation, The Undertaker. As the man from the dark side gained control of the match over Jeff Jarrett from out of nowhere, the lights darkened and the red glow burned in the night as Kane approached his brother. The two stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, glaring deep into each other's souls, searching for answers, and then Kane reached out and slapped his brother across the face, sending a message that he will not wait much longer to revenge his years of solitude, Kevin. You can feel the presence of the man from the dark side. There we go.
Brown Coliseum on December 29th. You got to wonder, Jim. I mean, is that, could that be where Kane's next attack, could that be where Paul Bear sends Kane next? Live television, a high profile situation. A huge arena chance for Kane to, to embarrass The Undertaker, for lack of a better word, in front of his fans. I think it's a very, very likely place. And the Sultan wasting no time, perhaps trying to seize upon the opportunity of Taker's lack of focus that he's got to have. And now that he has surprised the Undertaker, he better stay on him because if he lets up, then he's going to be cooked. 6'10", 328, oh. turns Sultan inside out. Knocked him right out of his boots and the Sultan is convulsing on the mat. He's given the Undertaker the highway and it looks like the Undertaker is going to run all away with it. Look at that strike. Ooh. Rumors are running rampant about the Undertaker's next opponent. I understand that this Monday on Raw, there's going to be an answer given about those rumors. Well, it's no rumor right here. We are fixing to see a tombstone. On the shoulder, and look at the strength of the Undertaker once again. Look at the girth. One hand, boom. Unbelievable. 